Hi everyone, this is MK. The year is 1492. Columbus, guided by the stars, decides to take a shortcut to India and accidentally discovers America. 2023. A courier following the route laid by an old Chinese cell phone misses the house. It would seem that there is a huge gap between these situations. However, in fact, this is not the case. What do a regular satellite navigation user and a great discoverer have in common? We will tell you about it in this video. I think you know that sailors used to determine their location using the stars. After all, when there is nothing but water around you without a single landmark, only the space will help you lay the correct route. And it would seem that with the beginning of the GPS and GLONASS era, star navigation should have sunk into oblivion. But no. Your phone shows your exact position on the map thanks to the deep space, among other things. So when opening a navigation app, we are not so different from the medieval captain tuning the sextant on the bridge. The thing is, the Earth is unstable due to the constant movement of continents, which causes earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. So for ultra-precise satellite navigation, you would want to look for something to track outside of our planet. The Moon? It is very much dependable on our planet, so it doesn't fit. Maybe the Sun, then? It's better, but it's still unstable because of the gravitational relation to the planets of our solar system. And here comes the quasar, one of the brightest objects in the visible universe. They are so bright that their light is tens or even hundreds of times brighter than all the stars of our galaxy combined. It is believed that the quasars are the nuclei of galaxies at their initial stage of development, in which a supermassive black hole absorbs the surrounding matter. They spew out a column of light. As they are millions or even billions of light years away from us, they are extremely stable in terms of their position in the sky. Actually, this is exactly what can be used as basis or the origin point of coordinates. To determine their location, a whole technology was invented – Very Long Baseline Interferometry, or VLBI. The information is collected from several radio telescopes spaced across the Earth and combined, simulating a telescope the dimensions of which are equal to the maximum distance between the original telescopes. By tracking several quasars, you can create a very accurate coordinate system that works not only for Earth. For example, by means of VLBI, back in 1971, Years before GPS, NASA managed to accurately track the movements of astronauts on the Moon's surface. A decade later, in the early 80s, a similar method was used to track the movement of the Soviet Vega balloons in the atmosphere of Venus. So it is not surprising that with the development of satellite navigation, these same satellites and base stations on Earth were also inscribed in the Quasar coordinate system, which allowed us to abstract from the changeable crust of the Earth. Therefore, when holding a phone in hand with GPS on, know that it doesn't differ so much from the medieval sextant. Have you ever wondered how Google Maps or other similar apps show traffic jams? The satellites are involved here too. Your phone transmits its location to the map service, and as it changes, it is very easy to calculate the speed of your movement. And if hundreds of devices are moving at a relatively slow speed on the road in one place, that means there's a traffic jam, which is what's indicated on the maps. By the way, this can lead to funny things. So there's this German artist Simon Weckert who broke Google's algorithms by carrying a trolley with cell phones around Berlin. 99 devices with maps open were slowly moving along the road. This was enough for Google to mark the artist's path in red. These are the vulnerable modern technologies for you. Many consider the theory of relativity to be something very distant from us and applicable only to deep space or something. And at the first glance, it seems to make sense. Much of what happens on Earth can be described perfectly well by the laws of Daddy Newton. Much, but not all. And without Einstein, for example, the satellite navigation would be impossible. The thing is that each GPS or GLONASS satellite flies at an altitude of about 20,000 km, and its orbital speed exceeds 14,000 km per hour. And this is enough so that due to relativistic effects, very accurate atomic clocks on the satellite lag behind similar clocks on Earth by 38 milliseconds every day. It would seem that this is insignificant, but not at such speeds. In order to provide a 1 meter precision in determining the user's location on Earth, the precision of the satellite clock should be a couple of tens of nanoseconds. In simple terms, if you don't adjust for the theory of relativity for just one day, the location determination accuracy will degrade to hundreds of meters and in a week, satellites will become useless for navigation at all. So next time when navigating using your phone, thank Einstein for this, as this is another confirmation of his theory. 
and although our planet is more than 4 billion years old, it is still geologically active. On the one hand, this is a plus. The Earth has a magnetic field that protects us from high-energy cosmic rays. On the other hand, this is a big disadvantage too. After all, it is precisely because of this activity of the Earth's crust that destructive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. In addition, there is a drift of lithospheric plates with continents on them. Of course, this is absolutely invisible to a human eye because for a whole year Eurasia runs away from North America only by 5 centimeters, so even in a lifetime the changes will be imperceptible, but that is not the case with GPS. The thing is, its operation requires base stations on the ground, the distance from which to the satellites should be measured as accurately as possible and not change. And as you may have guessed, the movement of some lithospheric plates turn out to be quite enough to cause a significant error in this distance. For example, Australia is steadily moving to the northeast at a speed of 7 cm per year, which is why an imprecision in location determination of more than 1 meter has been formed over 5 years. As a result, the government of this country has instructed the state-owned enterprise Geoscience Australia to make the necessary amendments and keep doing so in the future. But of course there's a flip side to the coin too. This enables geographers and geologists to learn about the exact drift of continents, which in turn makes it possible to predict, for example, future earthquakes or tsunamis, building clear time models of the Earth. I think many of you have seen a Steven Spielberg's movie called Jaws, and no one would want to get into a situation like the one shown in this movie. And although the number of shark attacks per person per year is only a few dozen, not every swimmer on the ocean coast is sure that they are safe from becoming food for such a monster. And this is why the organization called Osearch has been marking large sharks with GPS trackers for several years now, which allows them to be tracked in real time on a map that is openly available on the web. I will add a link to it in the description. In total, more than 100 sharks, mainly the largest, the white ones, have been marked in this way. Now going out for a swim at Miami Beach, you can make sure right from your phone that no one is going to eat you. Most satellite navigation use cases are quite serious, and this is not surprising. At the beginning of its existence, GPS and GLONASS with maximum accuracy were available only to military and scientists, and even now we use it mainly for business. However, the ability to track the location of an individual device has generated some kind of entertainment too. Firstly, it is drawing various shapes or inscriptions on the maps. Everything is quite obvious here. There are some apps that allow you to draw the track of your movements, so if you walk in circles or say in the shape of a dollar symbol, well, the tracker will draw it for you. There's even a whole website that collects such drawings, among which there are quite complex ones, for example, a ship. Secondly, it is of course a treasure hunt. What could be better than a drawing of the key? That's right, a blue dot on Google Maps. Taking into account the fact that GPS trackers are cheap now, often cheaper than 15 bucks, this allows everyone to arrange a treasure hunt game where several trackers are located on a large area at once, but there is a treasure chest only next to one of them. And this is far from a complete list of what GPS trackers can be used for. By measuring the difference between how the waves from the satellite pass to the GPS tracker, you can learn about changes in the atmosphere, by their reflection from the ground, about the snow cover thickness. Of course, GPS and GLONASS have many military applications as well as civilian ones such as tracking trucks or buses on the map. Overall, it is quite difficult to imagine our world as it is without satellite navigation. And all that thanks to Dr. Richard Gershner. I bet you haven't heard this name until now, but it was he who in 1958 convinced the American agency DARPA that satellite navigation would be the future. And it is thanks to him that since 1964, the transit system has been working and continues to operate. Although now it is mainly used to study the upper layers of the atmosphere. And what interesting ways to use satellite navigations do you know about? Share it with us in the comments. If you enjoyed watching this video, you know what to do. I'll see you again. Bye.